720 Ima Prince, 360 Kiwi, 635 Black Knight, four dollars for Mapley Heights, 965 for Fox Hill, 580 for Tristar. What a nuisance, 880. Number 18, Coro, Corey May, 495. And 285, Al Sophia, Phil Gibbs. Yes, uh, Bruce. Hard work they're getting up I don't think, uh, if, if their bosses are watching, yeah. they haven't, uh, they've done their work. Tell the but, truth, Rob. <laughs> tell the truth. <laughs> but it's been uh, wonderful having you yeah. all here. Good to see you, Okay, Bill. thank okay. you, Graham, okay. Rob and Philip. Thank you. Now the horses are in the mounting yard. Well, he certainly is the class horse of the race, Phil, having won the cock. Never seen a scene like this in the mounting yard in all the years I've been coming Flemington, Ron Taylor. I haven't either, Phil Gibbs. I really have not. I was just remarking to Rob uh, Reddings there that I have never seen so many people in the mounting. The excitement here. Number two I'm talking about anyway. Hey, I, the Caulfield Cup winner. He's just not in quite at his best form, but the rain has helped his chances. Well, Kiwi knows where he is today. He's back where he won the Melbourne Cup two years ago, and he's been prancing and playing up to the crowd in the mounting yard. His former New Zealand is first class, and he's going to be very hard to beat once again. Number five, late show, Jay Cassidy. Uh, won the Sydney Cup in the autumn, Phil. His form was quite... His winner, number six in the book, Black Knight, to be ridden by Peter Cook. Yes, a very colourful horse wearing those uh, red blinkers, uh, matching his... Uh, glossy black coat his form leading up hasn't been quite as good in the Caulfield Cup on October 19 disappointing in the McKinnon Stakes on Saturday but he's a strong solid horse who should yes be. well we're looking at the proud uh, mother to be of the future Mapley Heights a pregnant mare has never won the Melbourne Cup can she do it she was third last year she's a bigger and better horse uh, this time she's the one and uh, then we have number 10 uh, is it uh, number 9 Fox Hill PD Johnson uh, Phil, he's been racing in just about everything. Second in the Metropolitan, sixth in the uh, Cox Plate at Mooney Valley, fourth in the Dalgetty. He's a solid horse. He's won over 3,200 metres. He must be a chance. And uh, here we have the eight-seat luxury jet. Worth about. Yes, well, he'll be native. Wayne Harris. Won the Metropolitan. The Bill Cup winner. The Foster's Caulfield Cup winner. Tristark. Wayne yeah. Trelaw. Certainly one of the really true four. Been what a nuisance uh, to be ridden by Pat Hyland. Uh, he's been running on in all his races, Phil, suggesting he'll get... And there are the young Foster's uh, ladies, and they'll be out at the presentation a little later on. 14, Dwinette's girl, D. Peak. Yes, here's another New Zealand mare, and the mares this year are really racing in form, and they look like... everywhere today. Number 15, our boyfriend, M. Barnsley. He looks like being the pacemaker in the race, Phil. Ran a bowl race, went second in the, the Dalgetty on Saturday. Just cut down on the last... A little bit disappointing at his last couple of runs, only. Long cup to be ridden by L.O. Sullivan. Well, this is the one everyone's talking about now that the track is wet. Coro Corrie May won the Geelong Cup on a dead track in great style, and she will run... It's only one, one race, a maiden over 1,100 metres, winning the Melbourne Cup. I can't hear... Ah, Quinton. He has won the Herbert Power and the Werribee Cup at, his, at two of his last three starts. Comes into the race... This Melbourne Cup, number 21, Al Sophia, to be yes. written by Cups King Harry White. Well, what a combination, Harry White and Al Sophia. The form book says the runner-up in the Caulfield Cup is always very, very hard to beat. Both M. Clark. Phil, his form is quite good, although in weaker company, but he did... Three trips again, ah, Well, this is the one that Tasmanians will be hoping for. Bred on the, in the Apple Isle and racing well. And uh, finally, number 24, Butternut, Michael Riley. Uh, she's won two of her last three starts, Phil, including the Mali Mooney Valley Cup, which she won by a short half-head from Rocky Rollo. It was a great performance. It was a great performance, and Butternut could run well, but I think that her class may be tell, telling in the closing stages. And the uh, field will be led out onto the uh, track by 1979 uh, winner, High Perno, and a great honour for the connections of that horse. Murray Bell, betting out there in the betting ring, it must be frantic. Fast and furious is the word, Phil. Fast and furious. The way was led by a famous big punter who stepped straight into our Sophia and snapped up what was left of the five to one with one colossal bet of 150,000 to 30,000 with Mike Faulkner. That set the tempo. From there on, many of them were well backed. The biggest individual bet I've been able to find, the biggest result stands to a New Zealand punter who will collect half a million dollars for an outlay of 35,000 if Coiro Corrie May can be successful. Other big bets include a colossal plunge on Mapley Heights, who's been 10 to 1 into 6 to 1. She has uh, been back to win $100,000 in several places. 
The other one who's been well supported is the old favourite Kiwi, the 1983 winner. 100,000 to 12,000, 100,000 to 14,000, several times with both Graham Sampiri and Mike Faulkner. It's been an exciting betting Melbourne Cup. Every bookmaker's held at least 10,000, the biggest are holding 400,000. Soon we'll be able to see the result. At the moment, it's our Sophia, five to one favourite. Thank you very much, uh, Murray. Well, there you have the latest on the betting details for the big one uh, today as the horses now prepare to move out onto the uh, track here at Royal Flemington. Welcome to Melbourne, the southernmost city on the Australian mainland and home of the Melbourne Cup, Australia's richest horse race. Prize money this year is $1 million for the 125th running of the race that stops a nation. Since 1861, the first Tuesday of November has been the one day of the year when Australia truly has just one thing on its mind the gruelling two-mile handicap gallop that guarantees racing immortality for one of the 24 best stayers in the Southern Hemisphere. This year's race is not only special for the 125th anniversary and the million dollar prize money, but also for two other important reasons. 1985 sees the state of Victoria celebrating its 150th birthday with a year-long round of festivities and taking pride of place the visit of the Prince and Princess of Wales, for whom today's historic occasion is the highlight of their royal tour. It's also an orgy of betting. On this one three and a half minute race this year, 15 million Australians will wager a staggering $100 million. That's nearly $7 for every man, woman and child in the country. One of the bookies favourites, and certainly the sentimental favourite this year, is the Big Red from New Zealand, Kiwi. Kiwi scored a miracle win two years ago and was favoured to win again last year until Vets forced her late withdrawal amid great controversy. But now she's back, trying to become only the fourth horse in history to win this prestigious race for the second time. To tell you all about her fortunes and all the colour and excitement of the 1985 Foster's Million Dollar Melbourne Cup, here's your host, trackside, Phil Gibbs. And from the city of Melbourne, Australia's second largest with a population of 3 million in a total... Today of about 25, already into the low 20s, and just light winds, so uh, it's really quite... Uh, ...towards this massive crowd that we have here today. The former record is 118,000 people. I think with the rain that we had this morning, has kept a few people away. But, uh, of course, we uh, have seen the royal couple uh, here today. They arrived at the race course after the second race the Prince and Princess of Wales. And uh, here we have now some of the earlier material uh, recorded. This is where they arrived in the city to embark on a craft to bring them up two rivers here in Australia. First of all, the Yarra River, as Princess Diana alighting with Prince Charles, their Royal Highnesses will then board a ship to bring them up the Yarra River and then the Maribyrnong River where they arrive at Royal Flemington for the witnessing of this big race today. The 
big race time to start in uh, a little over two minutes we have the helicopter up there and uh, that is looking down onto this huge audience here at Flemington today for the benefit of our international audience I know it is known here in Australia a young gentleman today will be calling his first million dollar race his first Melbourne Cup Bruce McAvaney what's the feeling the feeling at the moment Phil is uh, much excitement it's a wonderful uh, wonderful honor and I'm very proud and I hope I can do a great job but I'm sure that we're going to have a wonderful race this is the best lineup we've seen for many years and we have the quality horses right through the field here we can see what a nuisance going in uh, with our boyfriend past Melbourne Cup winners in Kiwi and Black Knight they certainly add to it the mighty Tristark and of course our Sophia but uh, it's a superb view from here one of the great starts in the world of racing at the top of the straight here at Flemington not quite at the top of course at about the 900 and the runners are coming in so I'm about to get onto the headsets Phil lack of reasons coming in there's Spain is with me and there's there's Kiwi and what a performance in 1983 yes I wonder will we see the same again everybody says he's uh, as good as he was before but I don't know about that but only time will tell and about another five or seven minutes we'll really know what's going on because there he goes in to do battle with the other 22 runners now Sir Zephyr coming up I'm a Prince and Late Show a couple of the last there's Sprightly Native who won the Metropolitan at Randwick it'll be a mighty roar as the gates crash open here Late Show behind the line with I'm a Prince Fox Hill stands well there's I'm a Prince Brent Thompson English viewers know him very well great jockey rode 70 winners in England and Europe this year never won a Melbourne Cup maybe today's the day the Foster's Melbourne Cup late show in they look to be set wait for the light it's on ready stand well late show missed it I'm a Prince missed it badly by three lengths don't know if Thompson wanted to do that Tristark was away pretty well near the inside, showing good speed in the early stages. Fida Wa with Rising Prince. Our boyfriend showing speed. We expected him to with Butternut, Koro, Corrie, May. Black Knight much closer today. Silver Award went to the fence with Under Oath. Further back in the field, Twinette's girl on the inside. Fox Hill behind it. Lack of reasons moving up to be about fifth. Outside of it, Dusky Legend, Sazephyr Wide. White's got our Sophia three off the fence. What a nuisance inside of it with Mapley Heights, Sprightly Native. AI back fifth last, behind it now Sprightly Mative with uh, I'm a Prince second last Kiwi and Late Show's last of all. At the judge the first time, not going all that quickly. And it's our boyfriend, a length and a half to Butternut, rising Prince the fence, lack of reason three wide. Coro Corey May in the centre, on the fence Fida a length and a half to Under Oath and then Dusky Legend, Tristark inclined to pull. Chalor wants to get off the fence, Black Knight Sazefa. Then Silver Award, Tripsic on the outside. A length further back to Dwinette's girl on the inside of Fox Hill. Our Sophia's got about seven behind her. She's the favourite. What a nuisance in front of her. Two lengths to Hayai. A length I'm a Prince the Fence. Three quarters Sprightly Native. A length away then to Mapley Heights, who's third last, second last late show. And Kiwi's last of all. 1,900 out in the cup. Our boyfriend a length. Rising Prince is having a nice run. He looks like he might come off the fence. Butternut third, Coro Corrie May the grey, then lack of reason. Five links to feed away as they start to accelerate. Then Dusky Legend under oath. Black Knight midfield, Tristark's had a beautiful run. Three links to Zephyr, a length and a half to Annette's girl, Silver Award. Chipsicum next from Fox Hill on the outside of what a nuisance. Two links, our Sophia ridden along. A length to Ima Prince on the fence, one to Hayai. Four links, Mapley Heights, Brightly Native, two links. Late show, Kiwi four links away. Kiwi's giving our boyfriend about 40 links at the 1400. Our boyfriend led a length to Rising Prince the outside. Coro Corey May the rail at the 1200. Then Butternut, three links to Lack of Reason. Feet away on the fence. Two links under oath. Black Knight being scrubbed up. Dusky Legend. Sir Zephyr outside. Tristark improving. Then Silver Award. Dwarnet's girl further back from Fox Hill. Tripsica now Sophia still with a big job to do. What a nuisance in front of it. Further back on the field, I'm a Prince, Mapley Heights. Two links away, Hey I Late Show's way out of it. Kiwi still last on the turn. They come up towards the 600. Our boyfriend, three quarters to Rising Prince. Two links to Butternut. Coro Corey May on the inside. Making a run is lack of reason around the outside. 
Black Knight starting to thread his way into the picture with Tristar Tripsicum. Sir Zephyr in front of them from Dusky Legend. Out wide a silver award. Our Sophia starting to thread her way through, but well back. Kiwi, I don't know if he can win today. Mapley Heights second last and back with Mapley Heights. Hey, Iron Late Show. Our boyfriend two in front of Butternut. Then Coro Corey May. What a nuisance. Fidawa's under the whip. Tristar went to the fence from Tripsicum. I'm a prince coming with a great run. Coro Corey May's got to this one. Our boyfriend with Butternut. What a nuisance. I'm a prince and Fidawa. What a nuisance goes to Coro Corey May. Coro Corey May and what a nuisance. What a nuisance wins the fastest Melbourne Cup. A nose to Coro Corey May. Third and flashing up would have been Tripsicum in that group of horses. Butternut uh, with also Fidawa and I'm a prince and Tristark. Next time, our boyfriend, Black Knight, our Sophia Silver Award. Kiwi, not today. Then Hay hey Dusky Legend, Napoli Heights, Under Oath, Lake Show, Sprightly Native. Fox Hill, Lack of Reason, one of the last Twinettes girl. Rising Prince failed to stay. And Sazetha, it's above of the head. The camera will split them. But what a nuisance has won the Foster's Melbourne Cup from Koro Kori May. And Tripsicum will be third. And Despain, Pat Hyland, has recovered from a shocking fall 18 months ago in South Australia when we thought he would never ride again. Well, his number hasn't gone up yet, but it will. There's no doubting that what a nuisance has won the race. And you'll see number 13. It's not an unlucky number today for Pat. But that's what he wanted. There it goes. What a nuisance has won the Foster's Melbourne Cup in a thriller from Coiro Corrie May. Tripsicum will be third. It's 13. 18 323 the time 23 third tripsicum fidawa will be fourth and butternut fifth so some surprises yes 20 feet away butternut will be fifth the time 323 and here's what a nuisance with fidawa outside of him as our boyfriend was tiring and I thought for a moment, Des, that Butternut was going to win the cup. Oh, yes. Well, it did look as though that was going to happen. But Pat Hyland, he got him out into the nice going. I reckon about four off the rails is the best going on the track today. And that's where he is. And you can bet he's already had a bit of a look prior to, today, prior to this race. And there he is, a great stayer. He's one of the horses that has won at two mile, at 3,200 metres. Same as Coiro, Corrie May, she'd done the same. Tripsicums was a great run, you know, because, he, you know, he's two mile, he's just missed. And what a nuisance has just won from Coiro, Corrie May, Tripsicum, feed away and butter up. Lloyd Williams, the part owner of what a nuisance, won the cup with just a dash. And this is the greatest moment for a jockey in the southern hemisphere yeah there's nothing better than this and pat highland who's been so much through so much with that injury and then won the caulfield cup with affinity last year and had the disappointment of riding an equal favorite in the melbourne cup who missed a place last year and he's come back to flemington today and dares he must be feeling on top of the world he certainly will be the horse put the riding on the wall with a very good run because he's not a wait for age horse in the mckinnon on saturday he flashed home at the end of 2000 meters and uh, all round that's a great sort of a family get together because lloyd williams pat Ireland, and johnny ma are all good buddies and lloyd williams the part owner of what a nuisance publicly stated he'd be giving 10 percent 10 percent of the winnings which is sixty five thousand yeah. dollars to save the children yeah, fund yeah. and so they will benefit today but what a magnificent today he said well he hasn't got anything wrong with him today he said this is my chance and there it is it is his chance and the number though 13 people think it's a bit of a jinx there's but, lloyd williams with the top hat yep yeah. the winners by some puckle from fashion bell and here's highland about to ride his way into the record books he's been going around for a long time pat and i think he must have thought Des, that he'd lost his chance to win a melbourne cup well, last year last year he won off affinity the caulfield cup and it, uh, you know here it is today 12 months later and he's come along and he's he's won on another of his mates because johnny ma i think was originally he might have been even with uh, uh jim maloney uh, but they're all all in the family down there and there it is just a nice i don't think he waved to the crowd did he won't incur a 200 pound uh, 200 dollar <laughs> dennis going there the other part owner so they're pretty happy i'd reckon the winners raced by mr and mrs lloyd williams and d gowing is trained at epsom by john ma and ridden by patrick aloysius highland 
a great run second, Koro Korime. What a mighty New Zealand mare she is. And Tripsicum third with Fidawa fourth and Butternut fifth. Some disappointments. Tristark battled on well. Our Sophia never got into it today. Black Knight was beaten on the turn. Late Show was always out of it. Unbelievable, though, that the horses could be so far back in the race. They were Kiwi. 40 lengths from the... And, you know, some of the fancied ones were 30 lengths. I don't know what goes on with some of these guys who are riding. Truly, they, they set them an impossible time. A bloke on Kiwi, if he thought he was going to win today, fair to he had to have... Yeah, yeah, I, don't I think know. you're trying to say rocks in his head. Something like that. He was 40 lengths from the poor old Kiwi. I mean, he had no hope. He had to run the last half mile in about 30. Well, old Kiwi, an eight-year-old, but what a nuisance as a seven-year-old. He's bred in New Zealand. He's done most of his racing in the recent times here in Australia. Won the Chairman's Handicap at Randwick 18 months ago. Won the Duke of Norfolk at this track over the same distance. And Mr Lawler talks to Pat Harlan. He's had some great days in racing, Des, but none better than this. No, this is today. I think they brought what a nuisance to win the National Hurdle. <laughs> they did. They were going to jump him. Yeah. So he just made a million dollars. And what about Robbie Heffern? And three placings now in Melbourne Cups. Yeah. Noble comments Just twice. missed again. Ron Quinton gave Fidawa every possible hope. Fourth prize, not too bad for the connections of Fidawa. $50,000. A horse who came to Melbourne with not a lot of form from South Australia. But there's the winner. What a nuisance. Butternuts rider, Michael Riley. She won the Mooney Valley Cup and now fifth in the Foster's Melbourne Cup. I think Mr Lawler's happy. It's 13.823. We're about to get correct weight or otherwise. The time, 3.23. What a nuisance play. Weight. It's right to pay. It's correct weight. It's official. What a nuisance has won the 1985 Foster's Melbourne Cup.